According to GitHub, JavaScript is the most popular programming language in the world as of late 2019. And for good reason. It's easy to use, has familiar syntax, and can be used in a wide variety of programming environments. But how did this all start? How do we go from JavaScript being a taboo programming language to the most popular programming language in the world? Let's talk about its history and how it came to be. So first of all, what is JavaScript? JavaScript is the programming language of the web. It was created in 1995, and at the time, it was predominantly used to add behavior to websites. Things like making it so that when we click a button, something actually happens. This example is something we all take for granted now, but it was a huge deal at the time when websites were super simple and predominantly read only. Take a look at Amazon's first website and you can see what I mean. And take a look at it now. In order to understand why JavaScript is so important, let's take a look at how any standard website is built. We have the HTML, which is the general structure of the page. We have something called CSS that controls the style of the page or how things look. And finally, we have JavaScript, which can dynamically change both the structure and style of the page in response to user actions. JavaScript does quite a bit more as well. All this rich dynamic behavior that you experience every day is driven by JavaScript. In the past 10 years or so, JavaScript applications started to get really complicated. So the community built libraries that simplify how developers build these applications. Some examples of these libraries are familiar ones like React, Vue, Angular, and more. These libraries aren't mandatory, but they sure make your life a whole lot easier. In recent years, JavaScript has become insanely popular thanks to engines like Node.js, which allow developers to use JavaScript not only to build just websites, but to use it for other things such as hosting standalone applications, talking to databases, and talking to other services. The flexibility of JavaScript both on the front end and the back end have been a major contributor of its long-term success. So that's what JavaScript is and how it came to be. Now let's talk fundamentals. In order to get started with JavaScript, you need to have a grasp on the language's structure. The most basic building blocks of any programming language are called primitives. In JavaScript, the primitives consist of numbers like 1, 2, 3, 3.5, 9999, strings such as hello world, booleans which are true and false values, lists which are a series of things, and objects which are containers for combinations of other primitives. Objects also let you create dictionaries of items so that you can quickly look them up later. Think of an object like a phone book. If you know a person's name, you can look it up and find their associated phone number very quickly. Outside of primitives, we have the usual control structures such as if-else statements, which are used for branching logic, for and while loops, which are used to examine multiple objects in a list, one at a time, and try-catch statements, which are used to handle unexpected errors during your program's execution. We use the terms var, let, and const to declare references to instances of primitives or objects. Var is outdated and rarely used. Let allows you to temporarily assign something that could change later. And const allows you to permanently assign something that will never change, like the constant pi. The other important aspect of JavaScript are functions. Functions allow you to wrap a bunch of behavior into one variable. For instance, when you attempt to pay a bill on your bank's website, the website may need to do several things such as verify your identity, make sure you have money in your account, and finally perform the transaction. These three sub-steps can be wrapped inside one function called pay bill. These three smaller steps can also be functions that do separate things. You can quickly see how we use functions to create some rich behavior. JavaScript itself isn't that complicated, but it's hard to know where to go next and there's a ton of conflicting information out there. So what now? Where should you go to learn more? I highly suggest you take the JavaScript course on Code Academy. It's an online interactive course that teaches you the concepts I glossed over here. So I've talked to you about the fundamentals of JavaScript and hopefully enough to get you started. Now it's up to you to take the next steps. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on my next one. Thanks so much and I'll see you next time.